Hello, hello everyone, MassoZM1001 here, and in this video we'll be expanding on the work that we did in our previous video. Previously we had created a UV version and just began down packing it for the process of UVing. However, these are very basic UVs and we need something that's actually capable of baking. And then in addition to that, we have some duplicate elements that we need to hide prior to export so that way we can bake them in an isolated format. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And to see my keys, I'm actually just holding shift and pressing collection two, collection three in order to disable and enable them. I could enable them both at the same time, but I can also just press shift and that key to just disable each collection. And that way I could just cycle them out on the SCN layer. In fact, you can see that over here on the side. So let us create a alternative view that's a duplicate. We don't actually need our references anymore but I duplicated my view because who knows, maybe we will need our references. I'm also gonna increment the file, making it underscore four. And so let's just get in here and start dealing with our high and our low. So I'm gonna press F2. We're just gonna call this, you know, frontal bakey underscore high. And we'll copy that, press H, go to the next layer, press F2, paste it in, put low, press H, Go back to this one. We call this one F2, Bertha underscore high, because it is kind of the Bertha of this model. We will copy it to clipboard, of course. Go to our other collection, F2, drop that. We'll make it low and hide that. And we could hide that as well. Let, let's just call this red rocket underscore low F2 or Actually, that is high. Silly me. Let's press H, jump over to our other collection. And we'll select these and set this to be low. And we can press H to hide that. We'll press F2, call this ring high. Let's copy that. We'll go to the next collection, F2, low. This one is called nut low. We'll copy that. Go to our main one, F2. And we can just hide those. This one is our prime one. This one is our washer underscore low, kind of working in reverse here. And these two also, actually, what are we naming these for? Um, we could just leave them as what they are because that'll make it easier on the bank. However, let's go to this layer. We can press F2 and I'm just going to make that washer high. And before we hide it, you know, just to make it even worthwhile to deal with baking, you know, first let's tighten up our bevel. We're just going to add a loop, put a loop in between that. Just Alt S, push that in. You know, that way it at least has a little bit of value, just something extra, I know. Gotta stop doing that. Can't help myself. This one's ring high, so it's already named. We'll just call this stem underscore high. And let's F2, copy that. We'll jump over to the other layer, F2. We'll make that one low, hide, hide. And we select this and we just call this front ring, you know, underscore high. And we go to the other one, F2, low, remove it. So we're making our way through. These aren't even gonna be necessary. However, we probably do best merging those to the body, but we'll deal with that when we come to it. So we already talked about how these are just duplicate washers, so they don't matter. However, let's go to our low and see what's left. This one is gonna be not with two, two T's underscore low and let's go to the other one select it and we'll call this one high you know I, I'm sorry about my lack of imagination with naming this one is also duplicated so we just want to keep that in check let's just call this um, front thing underscore high we'll just copy that Jump to the low, F2. We'll just call this underscore low. Press H. 
and we could hide that as well. We could also hide this because it's not going to be needed. And this piece is the only one that matters. So we just call this um, wire thingy underscore high. We'll copy that. After pressing H, jump to the next one, F2. We'll call this wire thingy low. And we can hide all the rest of these because they're irrelevant. And I'm going to press F2. We'll call this wire wire A underscore low. We'll copy that. Let's jump over to the other one. And, you know, we may do some things to make this more interesting because having these wires just be what they are is just boring. So something like that for the name. F2 or actually 3. This one's already been named. This one we could press F2, change this to low, press H to hide. This one is a duplicate of nut, and this is a duplicate of washer. So, actually I didn't mean to do that. We want to select this piece, F2, and we will call this hmm, insulation underscore low will be suitable. We can go to our high, F2 insulation underscore high and let's really get in and talk about this thing so right now we have a solidify on it but if we put a bevel on it we can at least have it be a little bit more interesting and maybe even a subdivision on top of that don't judge me however looking at how these edges are being done you know i wouldn't mind being judged let us come out of local mode and this is now our high with everything labeled and this is our low with everything labeled. So the parts that are irrelevant aren't actually named. For example, these will all share the same UV set, so they're hidden. But without further ado, let's jump in and begin UVing this thing. And I'm gonna press Alt V, toggle off um, solid texture toggle just so I can see what's going on. And this particular piece, not saying that UVing is easy for me. UVing is just one of those things that, you know, you're probably more right than wrong all the time on it, like I am. But, you know, you just do a little better every time. But by no means am I hoping to uh, come across as some sort of UV wizard. I'm just a guy. So we're just cutting these pieces, you know, thinking as if we're serial killers, how would we cut these pieces flat to fit them in a manila envelope? And I'm thinking like this. And in the best way with the least amount of distortion is what I'm thinking. So something like this. However, we probably want to hit the back with a seam just so it unwraps smoothly but just thinking about it I'm pretty sure it'll be fine without this seam even when it's mirrored I'm just thinking what it's going to be like when it's mirrored as well and then we UV it so for a piece like this I'm always thinking that um, having a couple of lines trim it like so will help it unwrap better that way all of this remains together and we can cut that short in this area so we could also be using uh, sharp markings to do it because pretty much that's what I'm thinking in my head however there's another level to it that I'm also aspiring for when it comes to maintaining these UVs and that is you know the least amount of splits just to hopefully help it with baking but I feel that that's a flawed part of my so, um, not subdivision, my UVing ideology that maybe is outdated and has to be adjusted. Like, you know, I'm always willing to um, second think my, my dogmas on workflow because, you know, there's a chance that better tools and, and workflow improvements have come out. You know, I got a lot of friends who actually swear by RISM, but due to the program looking so ancient, you know, I, I just can't party with that. I'm a weirdo, you know, the program has to look good. If it looks bad, you know, what are we, what am I doing CG for? Let's press Alt H and just bring this back. 
and this is what we left behind so we were thinking hey we, we uv this pretty good no we did not maybe mark that as a seam and then this can go and we're just selecting face regions while we're in face mode thanks to uv isolation just grand And just hiding everything just um, brings a little sanity to things for me. Kind of a elimination chamber style modeling is what I look at it as. You know, just a royal rumble with me in this geometry. So that means that in face mode, this can go. We can, I almost thought we could toss that piece out of the ring. How's it hanging in there? You know, I'm going to go ahead and grab it here, hit it with a close uh, clothesline double layer hit you know knock that thing right out the ring also gotta say I'm not a um, like a big wrestling fan or anything however as far as the lores of fake made up universes go I am very interested in it um, even though now I feel that the WWE is possibly in this death throes because it'll be unable to ever create another legend like the rock or stone cold or anything like that you know, anyone they push out now, it's just not going to work because so many people broke kayfabe that, you know, they should probably be taking these people to court. But let's just unwrap and ignore wrestling politics. And let's look at this. So we have all of this simplified to that in these holes. That's what I would normally do. Seriously, I would normally do that. But today... We're going to try something slightly different. You know, I'm always experimental in my workflows. I just want to just try to see what other opportunities are offered just to see if, you know, there's something to learn, you know, sticking in there and doing it the same way over and over and over, you know, you'll learn nothing except how to um, master your, your, your craft. So let's select everything, press you to unwrap and these islands aren't looking bad. However, these islands are mirrored, so they mean nothing. If we press Alt-V and we look at our solid texture toggle, it's not looking that bad. Let's take it in local mode so we look at only what truly matters. And when we look at it like that, you know, this is like an alien symbol or something. So is that one. This is an E. Wow. I'm going to make a product and use that as a logo someday. You know, inspired by UV maps. Just kidding. Um, let's just apply this mirror and let's unwrap it again. And I would say that these UVs, let's press U, unwrap it again. Let's try conformal. And conformal is just, you know, one of these is all right. And the other one is just not. Whenever it comes to UVs, that's how I, I rationalize in my brain. Every time I'm like, one of these is just, but I believe that for our needs, we have accomplished a suitable result. In fact, we can, you know, get specific about things to, you know, select certain things that could be grid shapes and also make them grids if we want to be, you know, real gritty with it. However, seeing that isn't, I don't think it's necessary in this case. In fact, I'm just glad we survived this model. What I'm not happy about is how this particular island looks. Let's press U and unwrap and Everything is so compressed in this area. However, I believe it's because it's trying to give this an ample amount of face area, but either way, we're gonna to need to rethink that because that's not the most optimal unwrap. I see a lot of tension in the mesh, you know, un unspoken pain. So let's try unwrapping it again. Let's try, I, I could turn on live UV unwrap too, but we won't be needing it for today. SX, P to pin, SX, P to pin, and let's just scale this to fit. And by fit, I mean fit this vertice range, and let's press U to unwrap again. And we can press Control P, maybe Alt P to unpin what we have going on. And let's switch over to vertice mode in UVs, so that way we can S, Y, zero, P to pin, S, Y, zero, P to pin, U, unwrap. 
and we'll just flatten these axes out but just wanted to try to relax it a little bit really this area is not that in fact we're talking about the inside of a hole that's obscured by a ring like we really need to quit um, being funny and get to work so let's press U and unwrap And one of these meshes did not work out. Let's see which one it was. Let's press Alt X and I'm just gonna hit this with a modifier apply just to make sure that we truly mirrored it. And so on one side of this, let's go to face mode. On one side of this, we have this as our UVs. And on the other side, we have something a little bit more nightmarish. It's this one. Let's press U, unwrap, Alt P, U, unwrap. I am going to just do this via a bisect split and then we'll apply it. And then just re-unwrap this again so that way we can get around whatever weirdness we were being afflicted by. But Instead of over obsessing, let us move on. So that way this doesn't go on too long. So I'll press H and hide that. With this piece, we could just press U, unwrap, see how it looks. If we wanted to be more specific with it, we can, meaning that we can really UV the area that's important that's gonna actually be seen and then kind of um, do away with the area that won't be seen. So we'll just mark this as a seam you unwrap we'll also mark that as the same i didn't mean to press i meant to press u meant to press u u in case you're a pro at blender double double uh double tap u to just u u and just be done you know fastest way ever in fact with all the uh menus like we right click all these uh areas that are underscored with letters means that you can just right click and just activate those areas with the quickness and you definitely should Let's press U and we're unwrapping and we see that, you know, when we unwrap it, it just turns into a package of hot dogs. So I'm just going to grab all of these edges, mark seam, U unwrap, and we're looking pretty good. We can select all of these, choose grid, grid by shape, and we are now in much better shape. So let's control A. Also, Let's uh, control P, but control P isn't a thing in the UV editor anymore. So we'll just pack later and we don't even have to pack. I'm just, if we really think about this, this area of the mesh is like never going to be seen. Let's press I and B to protect our boundary because we don't want to just completely destroy it, but maybe something like that. And this will simplify our UV life. So really thinking about how we want to do this. I, well. I gotta not, I gotta cut without fear. So that means I gotta slice off the base and make it its own UV set. And we also have to slice off this part and make it its own area as well. Which means that for this area, we're gonna need one seam. So we have to apply our mirror to place one seam right there. And then when we press you to unwrap, we have some easy UVs because I mean it's just a cylinder with a base come on with our nut we see that it was over UV so let's just mark this as the same and if we unwrap we get something like that which is very uh, trippy so let us set ourselves up these are our UVs and when it comes to a washer, we press U. This is what our UVs are gonna be, but if we place one seam down the middle, we get something like that. So if we select this and we choose grid by shape, we get something like that, which is much more suitable. So not, not a lot to talk about there. I mean, a lot of these shapes, really, really basic, guys. We are going to select this whole ring, Control E, mark seam, and Let us just mark this as a seam and apply our mirror so we are dealing with the real mesh and once one solitary lonely seam, we'll keep the rest of it together. 
and you know the the area that we tried to split out here I'm thinking that it does better with the rest of its family so might be regrettable later but at least now everything is more unified we don't need all these islands for an area that's going to be obscured dang right so let's look at our power pole in the data when I was looking this thing up this thing has like two tons of torque um, which is a fun fact that, you know if you're using this on a robot guarantee I, if it was me I'm just saying from experience not even saying like you were so less that you would make such a mistake as I'm about to say but you know on a robot you would put like so many of these pistons and like each of these pistons have two tons of force so that means that they're like literal killing machine like you have a robot covered in piston that means that if it's Sonya bladed you with its two legs you know your head would just explode like a grapefruit it would just be a mess so let's just apply our mirror just something to think about you guys let's press U, unwrap I'm gonna select this shape and you know we see that we can't grid by shape but we can definitely SX0 enough to get us the same result and we'll hide it not talk about it anymore and now we can actually grab this seam down the middle mark it U to unwrap and we see that we probably need to apply our scale and then you to unwrap and we see that we get much better looking islands so scale is always a factor in the in this as well let's also choose to uv average islands and this is so unnecessary i don't even have to do this I, i'm just out of habit old habits i'm telling you i got old man 3d habits so watch out for me so with this one we're just going to Go ahead and mark this as the same, U to unwrap, and we could just select this grid by shape and done. You know, why are we even going to local mode to talk about this stuff? Control E, unwrap, L, grid by shape, we are done. With this piece, I actually like what the islands are looking like, but that's automatic UV. So we see that this is split, meaning it's not all continuous. That is actually a little bit more appropriate. With this shape, how will we unwrap? It? Just kidding. But we want to. Okay, this one we'll go in local mode with. I saw those two merging into each other. I was like, what am I looking at? We'll, we'll mark these with the same, even though I don't feel that any of this has to exist. And it probably does not. So let's select everything, press U to unwrap, and these UVs are a mess. We'll mark an edge here, mean mark a seam, unwrap, and we see that it opens up much more. It's like, hey, let me tell you the story of my life. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So this one's the one that's named. The rest of these are not named, meaning that they receive theirs secondhand. And what secondhand? UVs they receive. For this one, we want to at least mark it underneath. But with the wire display, I mean with the UV showing, I can't really see the geometry as good. I always need to see what I'm doing. Above all, above it looking pretty. I need to know what, I, what I'm doing. So we'll just unwrap this and let's just press SY0 P. SY0 S -Y P and I'm just going to bring it hmm never wants to be the way I want it to SX0 P SX0 P and let us unwrap again and we have something like that and really um, we could also go in the sculpt and hit it with the relax you know whenever it comes to relax as long as you lock those borders you can really just tap these things you know we used to have Q for this but all this active tool business now has relaxing as an active tool makes me wonder about what an active tool for UVing would actually look like if done by us I mean obviously I would get super obsessed just like I do with everything but that's our mainstay I'm obsessing over things right now 
Working on the next big list. This piece is not low. And you think these UVs would be acceptable, but geez, they are terrible. Let us press you and unwrap. Oh man, I thought those UVs were bad. Th that's even worse. Let's unwrap it again. And how do we want to do this? I mean, that is truly acceptable. This is like a little itty bitty nut. However, I've been seeing a lot of these like going around on this model. We could just hit it like that, get rid of this. And I'm thinking that that is actually a little more acceptable filling. So let us come out of Locoma and we now have everything UV. Let's press Alt H and we can press Alt V and actually look at everything in our UV mode, but everything's not on the same map. So it's like, not completely there yet also okay we actually already dealt with that sorry um think <laughs> i drifted back into the past for a moment so i am going to just save our file because saving is half the battle let's press tab and this is what our uvs look like on drugs just kidding this is what our uvs look like stone cold sober but it's fine. We're just going to let's first apply all of our scales. All of these are multi users, so they can't have their scales applied, but that's fine. We just want to make sure that we at least tried being formal with this. So UV and pack islands. And now that everything's packed, we can actually bring up our boy UV pack master. But before that, let's use Texel density checker. So we will calculate our tensile, our uh, Texel density and we'll set our value and then we'll set it by clicking on this, which should make all of our UVs just a little bit more even. And then from here, when we click on UV pack master and we pack it, everything is in and everything is nice and textile and dense. So with that, UVing is now complete and we can begin talking about the exportation process. So we are sending this to Substance Painter for painting because I'm trying to rekindle my love with Substance Painter, especially before it completes its transformation into the Adobe Borg. But we'll continue in the next section. Now for this segment, we can go ahead and begin exporting. So I'm just going to collapse the UVV. Actually, I should keep the UV view because we're in the UV tab. So we don't want to mess with that. Let's go back to our initial area and we'll come out of local mode where we have everything now visible. And I'm just going to select everything on this collection, press Q, settings, export OBJ. And we're just going to go to our piston folder we've been working in. And we'll just call this piston underscore four underscore low. And I'm also going to copy the directory so that way we can return to it. And we'll just export this OBJ. And that one will only take a second. We move over to the high. And we do want to hide the decal because we're not baking those yet. And let us just press Q, export, OBJ. And we're just going to name this one underscore high. And after a brief wait, it will be exported. And then we can open up Substance Painter and begin our bake process. So I already have Substance Painter up. Let's just go to new and we're just gonna open a file. And we're just gonna open our piston underscore four two low. Actually, that's not the correct file. Let's make sure that we have these in the correct order because we're on piston six underscore four. And we just wanna choose, okay, discard what we had and now we are ready to rumble. So we already have it in the viewport looking fairly dandy. If I press F2, we can get rid of our UV view, which we don't need to see. And let's just try baking this time instead of excluding the ones that we are not using. We are just going to just give our faith to the power of the baker. And so let's bring in our high definition mesh. I received a comment previously talking about Marmoset and that I should use it. And I did give Marmoset a try. However, as I was using it, it definitely 
became a little unstable and thus caused me a bit of rage. Also, what happened to our settings? Okay, we collapsed our common. Never did that before. We'll match by a mesh name and let's set our subsampling to four by four just because it's just happened. So let us bake and hope for the best. And everything almost went off successfully, except that all of our areas that are duplicated in here did not work out for our baking. In fact, even this area worked out a little bit. However, the bake definitely could have gone a little bit better because some of these edges are looking a little terrible. So let's try just expanding our frontal distance slightly and we'll bake it again. Definitely curious what's happening here. But we can also try using Marmoset and then finally solve the mystery of how do we use those maps over in Substance Painter where we can have this ability alright things are looking better however this nut, this nut, and this nut are all looking terrible so let us go back to Blender and just analyze what we have going on so this one and these two all share the same UV settings so if we tab in, or if we select these, and then look at their UVs, they're all overlapping. Wait, what? This one has a mirror and a subdiv... Wait, we're looking at the high, sorry. I gotta get it together. So this one has a mirror modifier on it. This one does not. If we look at the islands and where they're placed, they are here. If we look at these islands, they are in the exact same place. So, let's just hide everything that's a duplicate. And we can tell it's a duplicate because the name isn't anything notable. Meanwhile, the important one definitely has a notable name. So this one has no name. This one also has no name. This one's a prime washer, a prime earth, meaning that we can proceed. So I'm almost thinking that I should adjust my smoothing in order to see if that will improve the quality of the bake. But before all of that, let's just see what our islands are looking like. So this one represents this particular mass. If we select everything, it fills in the blanks. So let's just export this. This will be our bake friendly mesh. So I'm just going to export it same way as before from hops. And this is a duplicate of the low. So we're just going to call it the same thing, except we're just going to put an A at the end and let us jump back into Substance Painter. And under the project configuration, we will just load up that A file that we exported and we see it here, missing elements. So let us just bake our maps and under ambient occlusion, we want to at least use the same mesh name. Only same mesh name for its interactions. Anything else that we have to do that to. And I believe that everything else is fine. So let us go in. It's not fine. We're still getting some rather inadequate bake action. But we're just going to keep on keeping on. And we see that this is definitely looking better and our washer is looking better. This area did not fare so good. Just a little low resolution on the result. And for this, we also have more pieces that we need to hide. So this piece isn't real. Neither is this or this. So we are going to replace that A mesh and then just reload it. So export again, go back into Substance Painter and we want to go under edit and project configuration and just simply reload that A mesh, giving us something like that. And let us try baking it again. I do love seeing those ID maps come in because they come in so handy for us. And 
know, looking a little low res, but all in all, we really don't have to be so specific about these things, but we do because, like I said, if you're going to cut corners, cut the corners that are things that can't be avoided. You know, if it's something that can definitely be mitigated, then let's get in there and see if we can solve it. So this area's transition is just so harsh. I don't know if I remember it always being that way whenever you use Substance Painter, that you would end up with a bake that actually looked like this. Wait, did something happen to this baker? Did I just never know this baker? And we're just getting in here, playing with our settings, but I'm almost at wit's end. The next goal is to just get good maps no matter what. So that means that also we should deal with our smoothing just a little bit just to see if having auto smooth is causing these harsh transitions on the surfacing. In fact, we also have it happening here, which is just odd. All right, and we go back through this just to be disappointed. However, we have less issues happening with this area, but as we jump around, we do see it creeping up in other areas. So with that, let us open Toolbag 4 and just get this party started. All right, now we have Toolback open. I also want to make sure I have a directory open that we can start dragging things in. So when it comes to Marmoset, we're just going to jump over to Classic and add a new bake project. And instead of even having a folder up, I forget about the quick loader, which is really cool. We could just go and we could select our low and we can select our high. And Marmoset just knows. It just knows what's the low and what's the high. You know, everything's been put in these bait groups, which means we can enable our high and disable our low and vice versa, which just makes things a lot easier. But when it comes to more set, I have to admit that it's definitely one of those things I'm still getting acquainted with. So let us go to the low and play with our cage offset, which is one of the reasons why Parmaset is recommended. So we're just gonna pull this in a little bit We'll also specify our path. So this is piston zero four underscore two underscore TB, just to indicate that this is some toolback testing. And we also want to save the stuff as PNG so that way we can load it. PSDs are a format unfamiliar to me. Let's call this piston zero four underscore two and we're at least ready to begin cooking. So I'm just offsetting it and looking at this area, which just looks so odd. It looks like some of the geo isn't actually offsetting or it's offsetting an incorrect direction. So let's pull it back and we're just jumping through all of these pieces, just seeing what we're getting. And for the most part, I assume the rest of these should do fairly well so let's jump up to our bake project and we are just going to first specify what channels we want to bake you know we want to bake all the channels and with our ambient occlusion settings we just want to choose to uncheck ignore groups so that way it does respect groups in a way that option makes me have to talk to myself in order to get it to work right because i'm like this is what i want yes or no but i guess Maybe that's how an option is supposed to work. But everything else, we are just going to hit bake, give it a brief hold, 
may crash, may not. Let us choose to also preview our maps. And we want to make sure that the high is off. So we're looking at only the low. And this area came out looking much better. But it does make me wonder about the sanity that I used with you being it. And if I could have done better. I mean, where are these lines coming from? So with this one, you just doll that cage back just a little bit with this piece. I just don't know what is happening with this geometry in this area, but I feel like there's something I need to go do about it on the blender side, but let's just try offsetting it. And we will just hit bake. Let's give us a good look. Slightly better, but not enough. In fact, this one actually looks worse. So we are going to offset the cage just a little bit more. And let's try baking. Maybe I'm too lenient with the amount of distance between the bake cages. And I was. So this piece we will just maybe not that one with this piece we're just going to pop the cage out a little bit more and from here let's just hit bake I'm trying to avoid having to paint any skew maps or really get intricate with the application but it looks like it's going to be required however some of these pieces actually came out looking all right. I mean, for the most part, the body is not looking half bad at all. It's just some of these areas, either the seams just weren't the best idea, or we need to just go back to Blender and we need to just get rid of Auto Smooth because for some reason, Auto Smooth is playing more of a role nowadays than it used to. And I'm not sure about all that, but. This piece looks like it has some normals on it, but it doesn't. It just looks like that, which is strange. Everything else was actually baking correctly. So let us press Q. Actually, we can't even see what we have selected. Let us export, and we're just going to call this A, A. So it's an A file of our A. Let's open up Substance Painter 2 just so we can test this both ways. You know, if we make it work out here, we don't even need more set. So here's our mesh with all of its normals being reset. And so we just bake our mesh maps, hit bake, and we pray for the best. And everything else is looking pretty good. In fact, this piece is also looking pretty good. I mean, really, that got rid of all the issues we were looking at with the edges. So something about Auto Smooth. I used to export everything with Auto Smooth present, and I don't know. Maybe I'm just wrong there. Maybe Auto Smooth is just not needed anymore because we could take this same thing back over to Marmoset. You know, let's not leave Marmoset just because. It was so good to us. I'm going to just new scene this. Just start all the way over. And we are going to add a new baker. Turn on the fan because it's beginning to get hot. It always gets hot when these programs start driving me nuts. So let's go back to our demo. We'll select AA along with... Okay, sorry. We'll select AA along with high which gives us this, and let's just click on bake. We will specify our path, which is the same path as before. We'll make it PNGs. And I don't care if we overwrite these. So let us bake. And if these bakes come out looking pristine, then this tool has made a full of me so 
Wow, it does look a lot better. I'll tell you that much. It looks better immediately. Something about some of these shapes requiring it and some of them not that I'm just going to have to wrap my head around. But I'm telling you, bad habits. So let's expand this out. And we're just going to bake it again. Just see if we can get something a little bit nicer happening in this area. Maybe we got to bring it in more. But anytime we bring it in, in fact, the auto bake has our back. So we don't even need to keep looking at the results with it. All right, I'm just clicking buttons here. All right, just messing around over here. Sorry, I should do that. I should do all my experimenting off camera. All right, we got it a little cleaned up, but this area is like a point of contention whenever it comes to this mesh. Just fighting it over in tool bag. I'm probably gonna need to pour over the manual. I haven't done enough reading on this. I still am way behind on how these programs have evolved over time. So with this area, we do want to try rebaking to see if we can get that a little bit better. So let's just see if it can improve at all. Because right now it is truly horrible. And we look at our result and it's hardly better. So let's go over to Blender and see what we actually did there that made it so angry. So this mesh is merged. However, it's not connected, if you see what I mean. And so this makes for a very strange map in this area and thus is a issue caused by us in our modeling and our choices. So I'm going to select this edge, right click, subdivide. We'll place our loop, merge it last. So now all of this is connected However, we probably want to split this off. I know another seam split, you know, these seam splits are killing me, but I think I'm beginning to understand how auto smooth is behind that. So knowing is half the battle. All right, and there's even more unusual things happening with our geometry in this area. So part of it was us dealing with the baker without fully understanding what was going on. The other half was us modeling this geometry inadequately, which is embarrassing to say, but we must be willing to reflect on ourselves and our choices, especially when they result in situations like this. But now that it's connected, we can actually look at this side and discuss it. So we see that another questionable area exists right here. So we're just going to perform a couple of connections, maybe even just dissolve an area. And let's look at this area. And let's mirror that to the other side. And so our UVs have been having, and so we have to thus re UV this and export it again. But that's fine. You know, we want to get this as right as possible. So I'm going to select this piece, press U to unwrap, and then we'll select all of this, press N. First, we want to set our TD, and then we want to pack all of our islands. So a little bit of a mess. We could probably give ourselves a little bit margin too, but I would trust UV Pack Master's defaults. And let's just save our file, export this OBJ. We're replacing double A because everything that's irrelevant is hidden. So let's go back to Substance Painter, 
and we are just going to go to our project configuration, reload this file, and it looks absolutely atrocious. In fact, I love seeing how ugly models look with their UVs everywhere. Sometimes I'll give you an idea. Like, what if you had a hole there? But just kidding. That thing looks like a, um, I won't even say. Let us bake and think and pray. Maybe this will be it. Our result will come out looking great. Let's have confidence in ourselves. And we see that no more bake errors are happening aside from us having our frontal raised too high because we don't know what's going on. We don't even have a cage. So we're just like dialing sliders. You know, that's one of the reasons you probably would want to use toolback is because you do have a visual cage in order to deal with things versus just eyeballing it, which is something I'm always used to. I'm always good at playing the guess game. You just have to drag the slider a couple of times to get a lucky guess. But now we have this model in, it's baked, it's looking good on a UV level. You know, we pull in on this area, looks good as well. We can be proud of this. But what we wouldn't be proud of is the result that we had before. You know, we don't want to have just a terrible bake as our foundation, but something like this can definitely work. So I'm going to go back here. We're going to save the file just so I can press Alt H, select everything, and then export the OBJ. And we'll just call this just single A because double A didn't work out for us. But the single A can be the version that we bring in just to look at in the viewport sitting pretty with all of the washers and everything. Actually, there's still a couple of pieces missing. Let's try that again. Let us export. Oh, sorry. Export OBJ. The only difference between using it the way we have it and the blender one is that, you know, you have to just click a few extra buttons, but it's no big deal. It's just I'm used to just not having to click any more buttons because it drove me nuts. Let's just bring in our A. And now we actually have a model that we're capable of getting started with. So, you know, the first map I usually hit with these things is the AO because it's just terrible to do in old school. And the PBR workflow, you shouldn't be multiplying your AO, but here we are. So let us just take it to multiply and just bring it down to something subtle. And we at least have our foundational base to get started with on this model. So I will just pause that and we'll now begin texture painting in the next section. 